Hello and howdy. <clears throat> I'm here for a vinyl update. Didn't wait as long this time. Thought I'd go ahead and do one. Got a, a variety of stuff here. On on my uh, on this Wednesday. Hope everyone out there is staying safe and staying healthy. Hopefully everyone's still able to go to work and uh, all that kind of stuff that we normally would take for granted. Um, so starting off here, I got some CDs to show. Uh, I don't think I've showed these previously. This one is uh, <clears throat> The Misfits. This is the Collection 2. I might have showed this in my last video. It was on top of the stack, so I'll go ahead and show it just in case. Now I have both of these on vinyl and CD. The Craft soundtrack. It's a really good movie, but it's a great soundtrack. The soundtrack, I think, has uh, got a lot of bands that I would normally not think about or not know. Um... I mean, there's a few on here I know, like there's, of course, Jewel is on here. I know who that is. Matthew Sweet, Juliana Hatfield. Um, mostly like 90s, late nine, mid to late 90s bands, but it's a good soundtrack, good movie. Any goths out there, I'm sure you probably know about it. Uh, and I found this Green Jelly. This was their first one. I think it's just called Serial Killer. Yeah, Serial Killer Soundtrack. Got this at a Goodwill pretty surprised to find that. It's my first green jelly. I never have owned any of their stuff before. This one has three little pigs on it, so it's the first one. And I'd say that's definitely a one-hit wonder because, you know, to my knowledge, they haven't had any other hits. This one I used to have on cassette, Love and Rockets, with the Nice sticker there right in front of it. This has So Alive, which was a, I guess, a pretty good hit for them. Uh, I know two members, of, I don't know if it's two members or three members, I think it's two members of Bauhaus formed this band. Uh, and um, they've made several albums. Uh, and I want to say this one was their first one, but I don't think it was. I think it might have been their second album. I mean, I don't... I should know that, but I don't. 1989. And then this one I'd never heard either. Coverdale Page. I knew it existed, but never owned it. Also found these at Goodwill. And of course, this is going to sound like probably Zeppelin as close as you can get, considering I think Robert Plant or David Coverdale sounds like Robert Plant anyway to me. I mean, you can tell the difference, but. And then I also got this Bruce Dickinson autobiography. This just came out this year, or I guess it came out the end of last year. And uh, so, yeah. This one, Psychedelic Celluloid, British Pop Music in Film and TV, 1965 to 1974. And I probably showed these books already, but they were down here. And my memory's terrible, and I wasn't going to go back and look through all my videos to try to, well, look through the last couple videos to see if I'd showed them or not. And if you haven't checked out those videos, you know, since we're all... You know, not able to go out in and, uh, and social gatherings. You know, you should check out my videos. I'm sure that's high on your priority list. Uh, some 45s here. This is the Hollywood Argyles with Alley Oop. And show know a lot about love on the other side. Uh, Melanie with Brand New Key. And some say I got the devil. I always loved that record label. I have the album. It has the same label on it. It's uh, Neighborhood Records. David Seville, Witch Doctor. 
and Don't Whistle At Me Baby. Uh, Tommy James with Dragging the Line and uh, Bits and Pieces. Uh, the Five Man Electrical Band with Signs and Hello Melinda Goodbye on the other side. There's some uh, unusual ones and I also picked these up. Superfly by Curtis Mayfield and Love to Keep You in Mind. And Vanity Six with Nasty Girl and Drive Me Wild. Those were cheap and something that you don't see all the time. I don't have anywhere to put anything. Imagine that. On to the 12 inch. Here, let me drink this last drink before it gets too cold. It's really cold down here. In Hernando's Vinyl Hideaway. It's like a, like a walk-in cooler. First one I got here is one I picked up recently, the Kyoto Music of Japan, Kodo, I guess. It's not Kyoto. There's no I in there. And the instruments look interesting there on the back, so I'm sure it'll be, you know, that kind of thing. This is Spike Jones. I think I already have this album, but how often does Spike Jones turn up at uh, Goodwill? Not very often. So... This has um, Cocktails for Two is probably the one most people would know if they knew anything. Uh, Hawaiian War Chant. So, Spike Jones. Uh, this one was cool. Walt Disney's The Story of Toby Tyler. I used to watch a, um, a show. It was Toby about Toby Tyler. But I don't think it was a Disney. I think it was on Captain Kangaroo or something. So anyway. Uh, Fun and Games and Lots of Laughs. It's on Tinkerbell Records. Never seen this one. And the record is just dusty. You know, most kids' records are destroyed, so. Just be careful. Don't destroy it. This one looked really cool. Fundamentals of Faith, uh, a film strip series of Bible studies. What is the church? So it says uh, the theme of the Bible, what is the church, which church, and what must my, I do to be saved? So it's probably going to be semi-interesting to listen to. I don't know if I could get through the whole album or not. Who's, uh, this is another one, Who's Who in the Church, sermon by Dr. Jack Van Imp. He was really young there, from the Van Imps. Which of the Van Imps, to my knowledge, I think was just him and his wife. If it's the same Van Imp, which it probably is the same. This one looked interesting. How to Accomplish the Impossible with the Big Three Mountain Movers, Jim Baker, PTL Club. I have quite a few of the uh, records from uh, from PTL. This one says Pax Musical Reproduction. Well, I'm sure that's not the Pax Network because they were around a lot later than that. But and uh, this one's cool. Doc Severinsen, his trumpet and orchestra, Fever. This is also. Uh, no, it isn't. It's quadraphonic. I was going to say it's a stereo three, but it's not. So he must have had a. Well, it says command quadraphonic, so it's. I guess it is a command record. I was going to say. I thought all the all the his releases were, unless they were the budget release, which this one might be, because it says command does quadraphonic. So maybe there's a difference there, other than the sound, of course. I'm sure it'd be really hard to get a hold of a quadraphonic stereo system at this point. The Maravishnu Orchestra with John McLaughlin, the Inner Mountain Flame, or Mounting Flame. I have quite a few from this artist, but I don't think I have this one. I just seen this not too long ago on something, and then it showed up at a thrift store for 99 cents. It's in fairly decent shape. I mean, 
It's not gonna be a brand new record. Let's see what kind of sleeve we got here. It's just got like the advertisement sleeve with it. But the Maravishnu Orchestra is very, really good, what I would consider jazz fusion, I guess. And then we got uh, A Time for Love, Percy Faith. This is the whole the double album. That's probably not Percy, though. This is on the inside. This is Percy here. Well, Percy there, Percy everywhere. Um, it's on Columbia, not a double album. It's just they want you to think it's a double album. Pretty strange though. It's got five. Maybe it's supposed to be a double album. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it was supposed to be a double album, and I got ripped off, man. Yeah, because this is side three and side four. So, let's see. One, two, three. Let's see. There's uh, three of the songs that I bought it for is, is on the album that is actually in there. One of them is not. So... Life goes on. Uh, this one's cool. Here goes Latin. Edmonton Ross and his orchestra. It's phase four. And this is not a double album either. It's made the same way. It's just gatefold. That was like a popular thing because I want to say that Enoch Light probably did that first. And the last, already down to the last uh, vinyl. Or the last album. Well, that was a quick video. What are we up here to? It's only 12 minutes. Wow. I flew through that. Uh, the last one is totally not like any of those. Kiss Alive. They had this at uh, half price. And I have several copies of this. But what I, the reason I bought it was. Now, I know, first of all, and it's a double album. Let me just... Stop for a second. The reason I bought it was, um, one, it was a decent price, even though some of their, most of their record albums are a little overpriced anymore, you know, since vinyls, all that. Not that it hasn't always been. But, uh, so anyway, it was nine ninety nine. It's in decent shape. Um, and it's a first pressing. So, it's, uh, the blue Casablanca label. And it has the original book with it. And I, the other copies that I have do not have this with it. So that alone was the reason to get it. And if you're a Kiss fan, you've seen all this stuff. But this one is a first pressing and there's variations of that uh, and if you ever watch the amoeba channel amoeba music record store on youtube they um have what's in my bag and they had sebastian bach on and i've probably talked about this before because i it's one of my favorite episodes of it uh, and i've watched it several times and he goes through and talks about the records and you know picks them out and stuff and he says he always goes to the Kiss section first. Well, he said the first pressing of Kiss Alive, there's the, the very first one. If it has the, in the run out, it will give you the, the details as far as like the number of what it is. And it's produced by, I uh, can't think of the guy's name. His last name is Ludwig and it's not listed on here. Um, and if it's that record, then it's the one that, Sebastian said he didn't have uh, and he said it's supposed to have more like low end more like bass well that's what this is so I was excited I thought that it might be but the fact that it was a first pressing I went ahead and took a chance and 
came home and looked it up, and that's what it is. And I actually do have another copy of the same thing, but the one I have, the other one doesn't have the, the book with it. So that's why I bought that. <clears throat> Not that I, and that was the very first Kiss record I ever owned. Uh, so, you know, it's a nostalgic thing, like most things in this room. Nostalgic to me and no one else. Actually, I shouldn't say that. That's not true. So, that's all I got to show in this video. Hope everyone's using your hand sanitizer and uh, disinfecting everything. Stay healthy until all this virus situation passes. I'm sure everyone out there knows what I'm talking about. And you've probably heard an enormous amount about it. Stay off of Facebook if you can because there's a lot of crazy stuff on there, a lot of false news and a lot of conspiracy theories that is making people panic <clears throat> and buying all the toilet paper. But I'm not going to say any more about that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next vinyl update. Ta.